Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, in this video, we are going to talk about the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The same chapter that is the cell, the fundamental unit of the life. And this is the third lecture or the third video of the same chapter that is the cell. Okay, so today uh, this is just a revision slide. Uh, what is the structure of a cell? Previously, we have done all this thing. Again, this is just a revision. The, a typical cell consists of three main parts. Whatever cell, whether it's a plant or an animal cell, but it will contain three most important parts. That is the three essential parts that any cell will have. First of all, that is the outermost cell boundary, cell covering, that is cell membrane, and it is also called as a plasma membrane. Plant cell has an additional covering, that is a cell wall, that is a different thing which we talk about, which we will talk about in later, uh, later on in the upcoming videos. But uh, today, just a uh, structure of a typical cell okay so an outermost cell covering or a cell boundary that is also called as a plasma membrane or the cell membrane the matrix of the cell the matrix of the cell that is called as a cytoplasm which we will study in detail in this video and the very very important part of the cell that is the nucleus this also we will study in this same uh, this uh, today only uh, in the same video okay so let's start with the cytoplasm okay now what is a cytoplasm first of all cytoplasm is a semi liquid or we can call it as a jelly like matrix a viscous fluid which is colorless and a transparent substance and where it is present it is present inside the cell in between the nucleus and the cell membrane a small diagram is also given in this slide which you can see and uh, it will make you clear that what is a cytoplasm cytoplasm it's a semi liquid it's a jelly like matrix viscous fluid colorless transparent and it is found between the nucleus and the cell membrane okay the fluid part of the cytoplasm is also called as a matrix which is composed of various organic and inorganic matter that is dissolved in water basically uh, the cytoplasm basically cytoplasm is a main arena of cellular activities whatever activities is going on inside the cell because we have already studied that cell is a functional unit of the life. So whatever function is going on, whatever cellular activities, metabolic activities is going on inside our body is basically going on, going inside the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the main area, main arena of the cellular activities, both plant and animal cells. Various chemical reactions occur in it to keep the cell in the living state many activities are going on inside the cytoplasm okay uh, continuously the cell the chemical reactions the cellular activities metabolic activities is going on inside our body and just to keep the cell in the living state so what is a cytoplasm again revise it cytoplasm is a jelly like semi liquid viscous fluid matrix colorless transparent substance where it is present it is present inside the cell and it is found between the nucleus and the cell membrane outer covering and the nucleus it is present in between them and it is a main arena of the cellular activities all the cellular activities all the metabolic activities whatever function is going on inside the cell is in is where they all are going inside the cytoplasm so and various chemical reactions are going on inside the cell which keep the cell in the living state okay then uh, this matrix the cytoplasm is composed of what is its composition it is mainly composed of the various organic and the inorganic matter okay uh, dissolved in the water and okay uh, now cell organelle and the cell inclusion which we will 
do it in the upcoming videos but today only you must understand that what is a cytoplasm okay then inside the cytoplasm are the various cell or organelles and the cell inclusions are present but this thing which we will do in the upcoming videos in the next lecture in the next video so we will not discuss it over here in the next video i will explain you that what are cell organelles and the cell inclusion but cell organelles and cell inclusions both these things are present inside the cytoplasm only okay so this we will do in the next lecture okay now nucleus this is most most important part of the cell okay it's a very very important most important double membrane bound part of the cell why this is so important why so much importance is given to the nucleus nucleus is so important because it is the it decides whatever function it it takes all the decision actually it uh, um, actually whatever cell is about to do the decision will be taken by the nucleus this all we will do it in this lecture only so one by one so when we are going to study nucleus we will study it in the four headings first of all what is a nucleus then how it was discovered then what is its structure and what is its function so one by one so let's start what is a nucleus nucleus is a small spherical mass mostly located towards the center of the cytoplasm in plant cell this is not present the nucleus is not present in the center but actually it is shifted towards the one side why it is shifted towards the one side because of the vacuole this i will be telling you in the uh, the next slide only okay so nucleus is uh nucleus is a small see in this diagram also in this small picture it's a small spherical mass that is mostly located towards the center of the cytoplasm it is most important part of the cell why it is most important part because it takes the decision it decides what to do what not to do and it controls all the activities of the cell it decides whatever is going inside the cell the decision is taken by the nucleus okay so in this diagram i think it is clear to you that uh, what is a nucleus okay now where it is located you must know the location of the nucleus see this thing a small picture i have pasted over here the i told you earlier also in the previous slide also that the nucleus is usually located in the center of the cell but uh, it is found mostly in the center of most animal cell but in plant cell see in the animal cell it is present in the center but in animal cell it is shifted towards the one side it is shifted to one side why it is shifted to one side as you can see in this diagram because of a large irregular shaped that vacuole is present can you read it out from this line a large that black color rounded body is a nucleus in animal cell it is present in the center but in plant cell this is not present in the center this is shifted to one side why this is shifted to one side because of the presence of a big vacuole and vacuoles are present both in the animal and plant cell but in plant cell the vacuoles are very big what is vacuole where it is present what is its function this we will be doing in the next video in the upcoming videos okay so over here you must know that a vacuole is also a cell inclusion that is present in the cytoplasm and because of this vacuole in the plant cell the nucleus is shifted to one side but in animal cell as vacuoles are present in animal cells also but they are very very small inconspicuous very very small so the nucleus is present in the 
center in animal cell but in plant cell as vacuoles are very big and they occupy most of the part of the cell that is why the nucleus is shifted to one side okay see in this slide also this is uh, actually a bigger picture of this this thing you can easily see animal cell and the plant cell and you can make it out the difference also that an animal cell the nucleus is present in the center only but in the plant cell the nucleus is shifted towards the one side because of this large vacuole present in the set okay. now who is credited for this very very important part of the cell nucleus who is this gentleman he is robert brown a botanist botanist again i have told you earlier in the first lecture only botanist is the scientist who studies only about the plant cell that means he has studied and discovered the nucleus inside the leaves orchid leaves okay so robert brown a very very uh, important scientist of its time he first noticed the presence of the nucleus and where he noticed this thing he noticed it in the cell of orchid leaves okay so remember the uh, name of the scientist robert brown robert brown okay now we will start with the structure of nucleus okay so this is a very very important part of the cell okay what is its structure so the nucleus structure is divided into we, we will study in the four headings nuclear membrane nucleoplasm chromatin material and nucleolus so one by one the nucleus structure is divided into four category four parts nuclear membrane that means the outermost boundary nucleoplasm that means A jelly like matrix of the nucleus chromatin material and the nucleolus so this we will study in the detail in the upcoming slide okay so see this one nuclear membrane okay nuclear membrane is a double membrane that separates the nuclear material from the cytoplasm but this membrane is not a single membrane this nuclear membrane is a double membrane this you can see very clearly in this picture given in the slide okay a nuclear membrane is a double bounded membrane structure nucleus is a double membrane bounded structure this nuclear membrane is a double membrane means two layered thick okay it separates the nuclear material from the cytoplasm the nuclear the nuclear membrane has numerous pores that allows the exchange of necessary materials you can easily see very very clearly given in the picture that this nuclear membrane is not a continuous layer it is actually gap in between the membrane see you can see that circle is not a complete continuous circle but it is uh, gap in between certain areas so that those gaps those interrupted places are called as a nuclear pore why this nuclear pore is present in the nuclear membrane big to facilitate the exchange of the necessary material from the cytoplasm inside the nucleus and from the nucleus towards the cytoplasm so the exchange of material is taking place between the nucleus and the cytoplasm through nuclear pore what is this nuclear pore nuclear pore is a gap in between the nuclear membrane okay this is a gap in between the nuclear membrane what is a nuclear membrane nuclear membrane is an outermost boundary of the nucleus outermost boundary of the nucleus and it is a double membranous it is a double membrane okay now nucleoplasm what is nucleoplasm nucleoplasm is a transparent semi fluid matrix of the nucleus it's a semi -flu semi uh, fluid okay it's a semi fluid that means that viscous jelly like the same as cytoplasm transparent also like cytoplasm matrix of the nucleus cytoplasm is the matrix of cell and nucleoplasm is a matrix of the nucleus 
okay so nucleoplasts can be compared to the cytoplasm cytoplasm is a matrix of the cell and nucleoplasm is a matrix of the nucleus okay uh, now you can easily see in this picture certain this thread like structure that network like structure can you see that tangled thread like structure present inside the nucleoplasm yes they can be easily seen they are called as chromatin in this picture it is written as chromatin and it is also called as a chromatin network chromatin material or simply chromatin whatever you call chromatin also is correct chromatin material is also correct and chromatin network is also correct okay so inside the nucleoplasm what is nucleoplasm nucleoplasm is a fluid like semi fluid viscous jelly like transparent matrix of the nucleus okay inside this nucleoplasm contain it can, the nucleoplasm contains a coiled network okay coiled network tangled network like structure which is called as chromatin or chromatin material or chromatin thread or chromatin network whatever you want to call now what is this chromatin material chromatin thread or chromatin it the coil network like structure formed by chromatin fiber is a chromatin material now what is this chromatin material and chromatin fibers which is tangled in the nucleoplasm they are nothing but are the chromosomes they are the chromosomes at before the cell division when the cell is in the resting stage resting doesn't means that it is sleeping and eating okay resting means when it is not in the division phase when it is not preparing itself for the division it is called as a resting phase so in the resting phase the nucleus has chromatin network chromatin material chromatin fibers okay when cell is about to divide cell is preparing itself to divide then this tangled network tangled network thread like network they condense to form the chromosomes so this chromatin or the chromatin material is nothing more than a chromosome basically they are the chromosomes in the resting phase they are called as the chromatin material and when the cell is about to divide or in the divide, dividing phase division phase this network is called as a chromosome when it condenses it condensed and it forms a chromosome now let us talk about little more about the chromosome what is a chromosome okay so we will talk about uh, little bit more about the chromosome okay so i think it is very very clear to you that in the resting phase when the cell is not dividing it's not active then inside the nucleus nucleoplasm is present and inside the nucleoplasm chromatin fibers tangled network coiled network like structure chromatin fibers are present and same chromatin fibers tangled network thread like network they condense at the time of cell division to form the chromosomes okay so now i will talk about little bit more about the chromosome so what is this chromosome is uh, this thing so we will talk a little bit more about the chromosome okay chromosomes are thread like structures located inside the nucleus of an animal as well as the plants so if anyone ask you what is a chromosome so first line that you are going to tell that chromosomes are the thread like structures where it is present inside the nucleus now i think you must be clear that where is a chromosome located chromosome is located inside the nucleus both plant and animal cell okay uh, it is present both in the animal as well as in the plant cell 
okay so this chromosome is basically a large protein molecule uh, protein molecule sorry each chromosome is made up of protein molecule and dna now what is this dna this i think when you will come in class 9th or 10th then you will be able to uh, means correlate or understand more clearly uh, but now at this stage in class 6 you know only this thing that chromosomes are the thread like structures that are present inside the nucleus of both plant as well as an animal cell and this chromosome is basically made up of dna actually chromosomes have some specific units they are called as genes and what are these genes these genes are basically made up of dna D genes are basically the unit okay they are basically the certain specific segments of uh, this dna okay and and what is the importance of this genes what this genes do this actually uh, dna it is passed off from the parents to the offspring so whatever dna we have in our body half of the dna is from maternal side and half of the dna is from our paternal what is maternal paternal from our mother and from our father so the uh, the chromosome contains the units called genes genes are made up of dna dna is the genetic material and it is passed off from the parents to the offspring so whatever dna we have with in our body half of it is from our parents mother and the father and this dna contains the specific instructions dna or the genes whatever you call it as it contains the specific instructions that make each type of living creature unique so every uh this thing dna has some important instruction and every dna means of every species is unique human species dna is unique and pea plant dna is another is of is a unique type so every dna has its own instruction of making that living creature a unique one the term chromosome actually comes from the two greek word chroma and so okay chroma means color and so means body so whenever it was seen in the uh, microscope scientists have given this name to chromosome because they are cell structure or bodies that are strongly stained by some colorful dyes used in the research so whenever they see in the microscope they saw some colored bodies inside the nucleus so they have named it as a chromosome okay so these genes these dna these genes specific segments units called genes made up of dna these genes are responsible for transmitting the characteristics from parents to the offspring and the number of chromosome in each species is definite can you tell in our this thing human body has 46 chromosomes but these chromosomes basically they occur in pairs okay they are 23 pairs and each species of plants and animals has a definite set of number of chromosome for example human beings has 46 or 23 pairs rice plant has 12 dog has 39 and fruit fly can you guess only four pair of chromosome so see in this slide uh picture is shown to you see now i think it will be very very clear to you that the relation between the nucleus chromosome dna and the gene cell cell contains the nucleus nucleus has chromosome inside it chromatin material which at the time of cell division forms condense to form the chromosome this chromosome is made up of dna and the specific segments of the dna are called as genes okay see in this slide also i have shown you one picture human body is made up of billions and billions of cells 
and one cell if you see has three most important part outermost boundary cell membrane cytoplasm jelly like matrix and the nucleus nucleus again has nuclear membrane nucleoplasm matrix and inside the nucleoplasm is the chromatin fiber tangle thread like coil network structure which at the time of cell division condense to form the chromosome these chromosomes are nothing but basically made up of dna and dna the specific segment or the specific unit is called as a gene which is transmitted from the parents to the offspring and they decide the whole structure whatever uh, the characteristic the hereditary characteristics are all decided by these specific genes okay now what is nucleolus nucleolus is a rounded body that is present i think this actually this is a nucleus is a rounded body structure if you cut a thin this thing section you can see that a nucleolus a small rounded body is present inside the nucleus that is called as a nucleolus what is its important it takes active part during the protein synthesis so whenever the cell is preparing itself for the protein synthesis nucleolus helps the cell to uh, helps the cell in the protein synthesis i think this is also a very very good picture nucleo see this thing nuclear membrane nuclear envelope it is it can also be called as a envelope nuclear membrane nuclear envelope it's a double membrane structure small small pores holes are present inside throughout the nuclear membrane they are the nuclear pore what is its importance nuclear pore it helps in the passage of substances from the cytoplasm towards the nucleus and from the nucleus towards the cytoplasm then the matrix of the nucleus is a nucleoplasm chromatin network thread like structure coil tangle structure and inside the nucleus is present a rounded body structure that is called as a nucleolus which takes part take active part in the protein synthesis now i think we will end this lecture by citing out the functions of nucleolus okay that is just a sum to summarize nucleus regulates all the activities of the cell actually it is the boss of the cell that is why it is also called as a brain of the cell why it is also called as a brain of the cell because it will decide everything it will tell the cell and all the decision when to divide when not to divide what to do whatever cellular activity is metabolic activity whatever is going on inside the body is basically decided by the nucleus of each cell that is why they are also called as a brain of the cell it plays a major part in the cell division i think it's very very clear to you because of the chromosomes present inside the nucleus it helps in the transmission of the hereditary characteristics from the parents to the offspring because of the genes that are present in the nucleus okay okay so now today we will end this lecture in this lecture we have studied about the cytoplasm and the nucleus in the upcoming videos in the lecture next video i will be talking about the vacuole cellular uh, and cell organelle plastid which is present only in the plant cell so by that time you keep on revising whatever is being uploaded okay whatever lectures we are uploading you please keep revising them and take care of yourself stay home stay safe thank you all of you